Right now, though, more of our special coverage from inside Afghanistan. It is a final dispatch to our show from senior correspondent Susan Ormiston and her team from Kabul. They're the very first Canadian broadcasters to report from inside Afghanistan since the Taliban seized power for a second time. Now, this is the focus for this morning's report, the now-abandoned Canadian embassy in Kabul. You may remember these images from back in August, taken the same day Kabul fell to the Taliban and showing Canadian staff gone. Well, today, Susan takes us back to the embassy grounds and shows us what they found. This is Embassy Row here in Kabul. When the Taliban swept into the capital two months ago, most of these embassies were closed down almost immediately, including Canada's. This is the Canadian embassy. It's temporarily closed. Consular services have been moved to other embassies in the region. We can see the sign here explaining the emergency number and the fact that there's no consular services here temporarily closed. This is just the secure area, the security area to the embassy. It's locked. No entry here. The Taliban tell us there's no permission for them or anyone else to get in this embassy until further notice. When it closed, it did strand thousands of Canadians and Afghan Canadians who are still trying to get out of this country. So that is Susan as she returns us to the Canadian Embassy, or the former Embassy. She is live with us now from Doha in Qatar. So stark, Susan, to see that abandoned building. But even with consular services shut down there, there are some people managing to get out. We're learning this morning of a flight last night from Kabul to Doha with dozens of people who are bound for Canada. What more can you tell us about that? Yeah, on that flight were about 100 people, mostly female soccer players from Afghanistan, their families and other people connected with that sport. And the Federation in Kandahar, sorry, in Afghanistan has been working for six weeks to try to assemble a group of women to get them out of Taliban control. They finally did, and they were on that flight last night uh, from Kabul here to Doha. We were able to speak to a couple of them. We can't identify them for security reasons, but one 14-year-old was traveling with her older sister, and she was crying just before departure because she had to leave her mom behind. She was only allowed to take one guardian, and the mother told these two sisters, you go, I'll stay behind. Just imagine. Spoke to another 24 year old woman, a soccer player, who said that her family was in danger and she was so happy to get on that flight. She said, You know, you're so lucky to be born in Canada. I'm so unlucky to be born in Afghanistan. But they are going to be on their way to Canada within a couple of days. We also spoke to a family who'd been caught up in that terrible, violent. Uh, incident in August at the airport in Kabul. They had papers to travel to Canada that day, but they turned back and they haven't been able to get out since. And they were on that flight bound for Canada in subsequent days. So quite a momentous thing. There were more than 350 Afghan refugees on the flight. They're part of about eight flights that uh, Qatar Airways has been running irregularly from Kabul out of the region with evacuees. This is negotiated by Qatar with the Taliban. We're getting, Susan, a new look at the instability inside Afghanistan. There's breaking news this morning of an explosion at a mosque in Kandahar. And I know you were recently in that city. We here remember, of course, that's where Canada's combat mission was focused. So what can you tell us about this explosion? Yeah, that's a devastating attack today at a Shia mosque in Kandahar. Uh, the death toll is rising uh, hour by hour. This is the second subsequent attack on Friday prayers in Afghanistan. There was a large attack in Kunduz last Friday in the north of, of the country. So this is a very troubling sign that, in fact, the Taliban has not be, been able to control the extremists, the Kunduz attack. ISIS-K claimed responsibility, uh, no responsibility yet, but we expect that it may be extremists again. So, you know, we were in Kandahar a few days ago and we talked to several people in the new Taliban regime who were assuring Kandaharis that the province was safe and secure. So this is a real blow and uh, will make Afghans very nervous about this extremist element inside the country. You know, in talks just last week here in Do Doha, 
uh, the Taliban said that they didn't need American help to uh, help contain ISIS in the country, but this is challenging that now. Susan, quite right to say the number of dead is rising. As you were reporting live, 15 dead, the number from health officials just coming out, 15 dead, 31 wounded, as you continue to watch that story. May I say thank you, Susan, to you and your team for really the exceptional work over these past couple of weeks. Just a pleasure to watch. Thank you very much, and we'll look forward to another special report from Susan next week here on our show.